While color grading a clip, sometimes we'll have situations where the light levels are consistently changing and we want to have our color grade or aspects of our color grade be represented by that. Initially looking at the UI for the color page, it's not really intuitive on how we can add keyframes in. So I wanted to quickly show you that. in this scene that I have here, let's say this shot actually started outside the cave and we're going into the cave. And by the time we get inside the cave, we can't see anything. So we want to bring on these values and make them a little brighter as we're getting further into the cave, let's say. So how could we do that? Well, there are a couple of different types of keyframes that we can use. There are static and dynamic keyframes, which we'll take advantage of. But first, let's just get this a little brighter. Now, this isn't a color grading tutorial. Uh, I just wanted to show you uh, how to actually add in keyframes. So let me just quickly, let's just go in and just have luminance on and let's turn this on. And we're just going to cut out a lot of outside the cave like that, add a slight amount of softening here. And so now when we add our color grade in, it's only going to affect the dark areas of the cave. So let's bring the values up a little bit and then let's go over here and let's go, I think in dark, I can bring a little bit of saturation into a lot of those rocks there. All right, so I think that is uh, in a little bit better of a spot, you could probably spend a little bit more time on that, but let's just talk about how we could get this particular corrector to turn on and off different aspects of the color grade. So coming down here, we have our keyframes and we'll go like this. Uh, this is our corrector one. So every corrector will have its own, um, set of uh, adjustments in here. And so we can see we have a bunch of different parameters. And so all we would really need to do is just uh, turn on the ability to add keyframes in. And then as we move our playhead, once we make an adjustment, it'll automatically add those keyframes in. So let's come to the end here and we'll turn this on and let's go over to Keen. And I'm just going to adjust this so it adds a keyframe there and we'll just set that to one. We'll come to the other end and set that to zero. So uh, when this is completely black, we're not, it's not gonna be affecting anything. And as it comes on, the black areas aren't gonna be affected, but all the white areas are gonna be affected by whatever our other controls are here. So throughout the course of this shot here, uh, it's slowly coming on. And because of the nature in which that, you know, we added this on, it's obviously slow and it's very hard to tell that that was coming on in the way it was. With a little bit and taking a lot of this milkiness out of here, we could definitely make this a usable shot where we can actually see inside the cave. Like let's say there was someone sitting here or something like that. That's a way in which that we could do that. If we take a look at the keyframes here, we'll see that we have these gray little triangles that are kind of coming out of the keyframes. That is just representing that this is a dynamic keyframe. We can also grab the keyframe and adjust their position. And if we wanted to add in a keyframe, we can do that. So we have dynamic and static. Like I said, when we make an adjustment, it's going to add a keyframe on there. And as we can see, it's automatically adding in a dynamic keyframe. We can click on it and we can change it to a static keyframe if we want to. So now we see it's a static keyframe, but it's dynamic before. So now after that, if I was then to add in another static keyframe and let's have this uh, value go all the way down, the difference between this is we can see that this is gradually changing and as we see here uh, when this is playing right here it's just going to be a static um, jump so hold on a second let's come back to this keyframe and let's turn this back to one so we can show you that uh, as it goes past here it's just you know jumping from one value boom to the other value so that's going to be the biggest difference in the keyframes is when it's a static keyframe it's going to do its abrupt jump from one side of the keyframe to the next side of the keyframe uh whatever the value change is so you know if we're having let's say that there is a flash in the room or something like that we can easily get that out by using a static keyframe um, versus if it is uh, something that we want gradually like how we're moving through this the other thing too is you can come into here and if i'm actually clicking on the keyframe we can change its attribute so 
how if there's going to be like any type of ease that's going to happen, we can add that in here. Um, by default, it's just going to be like a dynamic switch from one to the other, but there is the ability to add in easing if that's something of interest. And like I said, once we add in another one, we'll have a whole nother corrector in here. So they can all have them and all of the different parameters can be adjusted uh, accordingly. And then so if I was to let's go back up to this one, because this is the one that we have keyframes turned on. Remember, the little uh, orange or red or whatever color that is, uh, that just means that there's currently uh, keyframes uh, on there. Now, if we were to go through and let's say we started to make control changes, right? So if we were to you know have our grade change throughout the course of time, they're all going to uh, you know be affected by that. Let's uh, make these kind of like crazy in color so we can really see that. Actually, let's come over here and we'll move the offset, right? So this is like some crazy uh, music video kind of thing, right? So over the course of that, we're having the colors change pretty drastically. So hopefully that helps with better understanding on how keyframes work. Again, just make sure that once you have a particular corrector, if you want to uh, have it record all of your adjustments, and you can simply turn that on. And then from there, anytime that you make an adjustment, it's going to be adding in those keyframes for you. So I think that concludes an intro into keyframes. If you want to know more about DaVinci Resolve or get access to pre-made assets, titles, templates, that kind of thing, uh, take a look at the websites. There's a link in the description to that. There's also free titles available on the website. But with that being said, my name's Justin. Thanks so much for watching. Till next one, guys. Peace.